Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Dave and today I'm going to show you part one on how I built the split top rubo with affordable lumber and not so affordable hardware. I used southern yellow pine 2x12s for this project and I got less than $150 into the lumber. I used the bench crafted tail vise and leg vise for this project uh, so they're not so affordable but it is definitely really nice hardware. It took me three trips to different home centers to pick up enough lumber and pick through it all to find enough clean, clear, straight boards to use for this project. I put them in a shed that I have out back and let them dry for about five weeks. I'm going to first start by working on the legs. I'm cutting the boards down to a manageable size so that I can rip them all down and dimension them out. Next I'll rip all the 2x12s down the middle so each board will be about 5.5 inches wide. And then I'll come back and rip off each side which uh, takes off the rounded over corners that you get on dimensional lumber. Next back at the miter saw I'll cut all the boards in half roughly to 36 inches. I've been trying to think of ways to not show so much joining and planing operations but when making a bench like this with laminated legs and a laminated top later on it's important to know the milling process. So I guess I'll keep the process for this video. I start by getting one flat face on the joiner and then I'll take all the boards over to the planer and get the other side parallel. And once that's done I'm ready to glue the legs up. I'm going to try to glue all four legs up at one time so I'm going to do two legs in one set of clamps and two in the other. It was a little stressful but it worked out pretty good. I let the glue dry on the legs overnight and then I was back to the joiner and planer to get the final dimensions down to 5 inches wide by 4 inches thick. Then to get the legs to final length I used my table saw and my miter fence and had to take a couple passes. My bench is going to be 33 inches tall so I'm cutting the legs to a final length of 30 and a half inches. That with an inch and a half tenon and a 4 inch thick top should get me right where I need to be. Next I'll start roughing the boards that are going to make up the two tops. I'll cut everything to a rough length and rip all the boards down the middle and take off that rounded over edge just like I did on the legs. After I've rough cut all the boards I'll let everything sit overnight. And then just like the legs I'll take everything to the joiner to get one straight face and then take it over to the planer to get the other side parallel. And now I'm ready to start gluing up the tops. There's going to be two tops, both of them will be made of eight boards laminated together. I can glue one of them all the way up, all eight boards, and then the second top I'm only going to glue six boards up for now. I'll keep two boards off to the side. One of them is going to be a little bit shorter to accommodate the tail vise, and the other one's going to be the long front face that's going to have the dovetails in it. The first top's going to come out to be around 11 and 3 8 inch wide, um, so it's just wide enough to fit through my planer. Uh, I'm going to start by taking my hand plane and flattening one face. As long as you take your time with the glue up, it should be pretty close to flat coming out of the clamps. It only took me about 10 minutes or so to plane the one side flat. And then I'll do the same planing process on the six board top. After I've gotten one side of each top flat, I'll run the other sides through the planer. The tops are starting to get pretty heavy at this point, so I called my son out to give me a hand getting them through. The next step is to square up one of the ends of the top. I'm using a circular saw for this, so I'm just checking to make sure that my fence on the saw is 90 degrees to the blade. To square up the one end of the top, I'll mark off a straight line, um, use my saw guide to line up the cut, and then make this cut in two passes. One note here is that I want to mark far enough in um, to make sure that I get rid of all the snipe left from my planer. And once I'm finished with the first cut, I'll flip the top over, line up the saw guide again, and make the second pass. On the other end of the small top, I'm going to mark out to put a big tenon where the end cap and dovetail and tail vise are going to go. This tenon is going to be an inch and a half wide by an inch and a quarter long. I'll make it by using my circular saw to make the cut. I'll make one cut up against the line, and then I'll make multiple little cuts that I can come and break out later. Now I can break away most of the pieces of wood that was left between the saw curves away by hand. I'll clean up the corners and the faces of the tenons using a combination of uh, wide chisels and a couple of shoulder planes that I have. 
The tenon only takes up about half of the top. I need to remove it where the tail vise is going to go. And the best way I found to do that was with a hand saw. So I'll start by ripping in from the end and then I'll flip the top up on its side and cut the rest of the tenon off. Then I can take my chisel and just clean up the shoulders of where I just got done cutting. Here I'm cleaning up the end cap that I made for this top. Uh, it's just uh, two boards glued together. I'll run it through the joiner and then flush up the ends on a chop saw. Next I need to mark out where the mortise is going to go on the end cap. I attached a board underneath of the top that stuck out a little bit past the end and then I could reference the end cap onto that surface. This way I could take my marking knife and just kind of prick lines into the end cap. Then I was able to come back with my square, darken in all the lines, and mark out all the waste. Then I can cut out the mortise and the end cap using my router. Since the router left rounded corners in the mortise, I took my chisel and squared them all up. After cleaning up the mortise, I ended up getting a really good tight fit. The next thing I needed to do was mark out where the tail vise was going to go. The best thing to do here is follow the benchcrafted directions, but I'll run you through how I did it. With all the pieces of the screw put together, I extended it all the way out to the end and marked that out. Then I marked just a quarter inch past that line. Then I marked where the end of the screw was going to sit. I clamped the two last boards in place that are going to go on this top. Then I put the rails in place and the sliding plate. I ran it back and forth to make sure that the rails were exactly where they should be and then marked out where the rails sit. Then I marked out the area between the two rails and then sat the sliding plate and nut plate on the end of the top and marked out how deep the nut plate was going to sit into the top. Then came the daunting task of having to route out all the waste between the rails and as deep as the nut plate sits on the top. Um, this took quite a while. I used a two and a half inch long router bit and um, just kept taking small passes about a quarter of an inch deep each time. Next I had to drill a hole in the end cap that the tail vise screw would sit in. Benchcrafted gives you a template to follow but there are a couple things to remember there is to make sure that you scale the template properly and that if your bench doesn't come out to be exactly four inches thick uh, the template may not work so it takes a lot of measuring and checking to make sure you got it right. I didn't get a good video of this but I did also have to route out a shoulder that a washer is going to sit in at the end of the vice screw. After that shoulder was cut and then I can install the vice screw loosely um, install the nut plate and sliding plate um, and run it back and forth a few times to see how it's going to work. Then I can start preparing the end cap to put the dovetails in. To make these dovetails or condor tails I'm following issue 191 of Popular Woodworking Magazine's article. Uh, they have a really good article on how to make these tails for a workbench. I start by marking out how deep the dovetails are going to go into the end cap and then I transfer that line to the end board that'll have the tails on it. Next I mark out where I'm going to put the tails. I use this homemade dovetail marker to draw the lines and get the angles right. Then I darken the marking knife line from earlier and mark out all the waste. Here I'm making a jig out of some plywood and a screw that I can use to cut these dovetails out of the bandsaw. Basically I'm just taking a scrap piece of rectangle plywood, uh, cutting an angle out that matches the angle of the dovetails I drew earlier, and then I can take it over to the bandsaw, set it up against my fence, and cut the dovetails out on the end board. This method really makes it easy to get good straight tails cut on a long board like this. Once the cuts are done at the bandsaw, I can bring it back over to my workbench and cut the rest of the waste out with my hand saws and coping saws. Once I've got all the waste cut out with my saws, I'll use my chisels to clean up to the lines and make sure I have good crisp shoulders. The next step is to cut a shoulder into the tail so that I have an easy way to register this board against the end cap board. You could use a shoulder plane for this, but I had the router already set up, so I used the combination of the router and my hand chisels to clean up to the lines. 
Now I can transfer the tail lines over to the end cap board so I can start making the pins. Having that shoulder on the tail board really makes it easy to register the tail board against the end cap. Here I'm using my router to cut out the waste for the pins. This was a little nerve wracking because I had to do this freehand and I was worried about ruining the end cap that I put so much work into so far. The magazine article has you clean out just a small portion of the pins with your router and then clean up with a chisel and come back with a pattern bit to clean out the rest. But I wasn't able to find a pattern bit the right size so I just cleaned out most of the waste with this router and then all the edges and shoulders with my chisels. I tried to follow the magazine article the best I could minus the pattern bit stuff and uh, as a result I ended up getting really good tight fitting dovetails. In addition to the dovetails I'm using half inch lag bolts to hold the rest of the end cap on so here I'm just drilling out where I'm going to put those lag bolts. To allow for some seasonal wood movement later on I'm going to oblong the hole that the uh, lag bolt on the end is going to sit in. And here I'm just getting the pilot holes into the top. These are pretty big half inch lag bolts and I don't want them to split the top. Next I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the middle of the tenon and then stick the end cap on and install the lag bolts. Now I'm ready to apply a little bit of glue and install the face board or tail board of this top as well as the short board where the wagon vise is going to sit. When clamping everything together, I made sure to use a piece of 2x material that's going to be about the same size as the dog block to slide it up and down the slot between the dog strip board and the tail board. Um, this way I'll make sure I have an even gap all the way up and down the top. Next I need to drill a couple of holes where the flange is going to go for the screw on the tail vise. Then I'll use some sandpaper just to clean up all the marking lines and stuff I had on the end cap. Next at the bandsaw, I'm going to rough out what's going to be the dog block that mounts into the tail vise. I left the tail board a little bit long so after the glue's all dried I can come back and saw that off with my handsaw and then um, plane those last two boards flat with the rest of the top. Next I'll loosely install the tail vise hardware and mark out where the rails are going to go. I'll use the rail itself to measure out how deep I need to make the router cut. Now I can go in with the router and make the slots that the rails are going to sit in. This was another nerve wracking operation that I had to kind of do by freehand because there was no good way to get the fence, at least on my router set up, uh, in a good position. I've seen in some people's builds where they have the Festool router has a really good fence system and that would have made this job a lot easier but I uh, didn't have that on this job. Once I've finished routing everything out and cleaning up the corners with a chisel, I can install the rails loosely and put the sliding plate in um, and make sure that it runs freely up and down the rails. Once I'm happy with the fit, then I can drill some pilot holes and install all the screws that hold the rails down. Now I'm ready to final install all the vice hardware. I'll install the washer and the flange to the screw and then I can install the wheel to the screw by knocking in the pin. Then I applied a little 3-in-1 oil to where the washer and the flange sit on the screw. Then I can install the screw and the wheel to the bench top, install the bolts and nuts through the flange, and then just sit here and admire how well this thing works. This tail vise runs so smooth, I, I'm so impressed with the bench crafted hardware. My last bench had um, just a couple simple screws that were about $50 each um, for the leg vise and tail vise, and they work great, and they hold work probably just as well as anything else would, but just how smooth and easy this thing runs is going to be really nice and I'm glad I spent the extra money to get this hardware. The last step on this top is to install the sliding bench dog. I snuck up on the fit by um, test fitting it and then bringing it over and hand planing it a little bit and then going back and fitting it again until I got a really good fit that wasn't too sloppy um, but still allowed the vise to move real smooth. And that just about finishes up the top assemblies. I think this is a good stopping point for this video. In the next video, I'll build the base and the leg vices and get everything wrapped up. So please subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss part two. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also, leave some comments below. Tell me what you think.